Hey class, in this recording, this is Mr. Rist here, and in this recording we're going to talk about blood vessels and the electrical system of the heart. So first let's talk about blood flow to the heart. There's some major blood vessels that carry blood to the heart. We have the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, and pulmonary vein. And as a rule of thumb, if it carries blood towards the heart, it's a vein. So let's look at the invisible body here. Here we have our three-dimensional heart floating in the void. Up uh, here, associated with the right atrium, we have the superior vena cava. And then down here on the bottom, <laughs> surprise, surprise, we have the inferior vena cava. Both of these blood vessels are considered great veins or great blood vessels that carry blood to the heart. We have some other blood vessels that carry blood to the heart. They are the pulmonary veins. And because they're pulmonary veins carrying blood away from the lungs towards the heart, they are going to be kind of a reddish color because they have oxygenated blood. And so we have pulmonary veins right here, right pulmonary veins, and then left pulmonary veins. And why <laughs> Invisible Body has decided to uh, have the left base and not have the right base is a little... Uh, uh, why they decide to slice and dice it like that is... Well, a creative decision on their part, but we have left pulmonary veins and right pulmonary veins, all carrying blood to the heart. And then as we're looking at blood flow through the heart, let's uh, first start with, as a frame of reference, the superior vena cava. That will carry blood into the right atrium. And then from the right atrium, that blood is going to travel over here. One moment, I need to get rid of those pulmonary arteries. It's just, they're just in the way. There we go. So after that blood gets into the right atrium, it's going to travel through the right atrioventricular valve into the right ventricle. And from the right ventricle, here's our right ventricle being highlighted, the blood will flow up and towards the pulmonary valve from the pulmonary valve, blood flows to the pulmonary trunk, to the pulmonary veins. Let me reorient for you here. So to the pulmonary veins. And from those pulmonary veins, it will go to the lungs, drop off carbon dioxide, pick up oxygen, and come back to the heart through the pulmonary, ar excuse me, I said pulmonary veins. I should have said pulmonary arteries. That was a <laughs> a rookie mistake on my part. They're going away from the heart, so they are an artery. So we have the pulmonary arteries right here. And then f as that blood heads back towards the heart from the lungs, we have the pulmonary veins going back towards the heart, and that blood will enter into the left atria. From the left atria, the blood flows through the left atrioventricular valve, and then will enter into the left ventricle. And then within the left ventricle, the blood will exit through the aortic valve and go through the aorta to the whole systemic circulation or most of the body. And because that's, there are more tubes, there's physically longer for the blood to travel, the myocardium of the left ventricle is going to be much thicker than the myocardium of the right ventricle. And if I tilt here, you can see up there, here we have the aortic valve which is going to be the point, the valve that the blood travels past as it exits the left ventricle and goes through the aorta to the rest of the body. So that's the pathway of blood flow through the heart. And as we're looking at that blood flow going away from the heart, I'd mentioned the aortic uh, the ascending aorta. I didn't mention the aortic arch though, so let's go back here. We can't see the aortic arch within this view, so I need to go and back up just a bit here. There we go. Now we can see the aortic arch. So the aortic arch is this portion up here that arches over the superior margin of the pulmonary trunk. And we've already mentioned the pulmonary trunk artery. 
and pulmonary arteries as well. Let's move on to coronary circulation. So as we look at coronary circulation, these are going to be the blood vessels that carry blood to the myocardium of the heart. And I need to go ahead and just reset this view here. So let's get rid of the pulmonary system entirely, or the respiratory system. I always call it the pulmonary system. I'm just, I'm, I have a, I'm a lung-centric kind of guy, what can I say? So I, uh, let's get rid of pulmonary circulation too. So we have a nice, clean, crisp-looking heart here. So while we're looking at the coronary arteries, these are the arteries that carry blood, deliver oxygenated blood to the myocardium. And we have the left and right coronary artery. And if you just look at the gross view of the heart, we have the right one on the right side and the left one on the left side, but the, there's more to it than that. These coronary arteries are the first blood vessels to leave the aorta. Here's the ascending aorta. And if I remove the pulmonary trunk, you can see how the right coronary artery, let me remove that there as well, that right coronary artery is the first blood vessel to exit the aorta along with the left coronary artery also being the, the first blood vessel to exit the aorta. So the left and right coronary arteries are the first ones to carry blood away from the aorta. And if you think of it, the heart is going to be a little bit selfish. It's going to deliver oxygenated blood to itself before anything else gets oxygenated blood. A question a lot of students will ask me is, is coronary circulation part of the systemic or pulmonary circuits? And the answer is systemic because coronary circulation comes from the aorta and the aorta feeds the systemic circuits. So those were the, those were the arteries, those were the easy ones. The veins are a little bit more difficult to find. So first I need to back things up a bit for us here. So as we're looking at these veins, we have this vein right here located within the anterior interventricular sulcus. And this vein is referred to as the great cardiac vein. One of the easiest ones to find, that great cardiac vein. And then as we flip it around over here, this largest vein that you'll see on the heart right here is referred to as the coronary sinus. And this coronary sinus is going to be a convergence point. Well, many coronary veins merge together here to form that coronary sinus. And then we also have two more that we need to cover, the posterior vein of left ventricle and middle cardiac vein. For the posterior vein of the left ventricle, that's going to be located right over here by the left ventricle, as its name implies, and it's on the backside, the posterior of the left ventricle. One second, Tim. I need, I'm making a recording for my students. And then here we have the middle cardiac vein. And that middle cardiac vein is located over here within the posterior interventricular sulcus. So those are the major blood vessels of coronary circulation that you need to know. Up next on our lab objective sheet, we have the conduction system of the heart. So as we're looking at the conduction system of the heart, I'm gonna flip things around, kind of reset our view here. We're gonna start up here within the right atrium at the SA sinoatrial node. This is referred to as the pacemaker of the heart, and it's going to initiate the action potentials that contract our heart, or that it's going to initiate our heartbeat. And after that SA node contracts, it's, we are going to send the electrical signals through the internodal bundles. And these internodal bundles, as the name implies, are in between the SA node and the next node on our list, the atrioventricular node. So let's go ahead and remove that layer right there to expose the atrioventricular node. And when that action potential gets to the atrioventricular node, it will pause for a little bit and then expose 
or then then it'll travel through the atrioventricular bundle, also known as the bundle of his. And as that action potential travels down the bundle of his, it's going to separate to left-right bundle branches, which I can expose over here. So here is the atrioventricular bundle, and here are the left-right bundle branches, left and right. And then that signal travels down to the apex of the heart, where we'll ha then have the Purkinje fibers, the small little fibers, fibrous nerves, that will then deliver the action potential directly to the myocardium of the left and right ventricles. So that's all of our coronary, our blood flow, or bl blood vessels of the heart, and major nerves and nervous tissues of the heart. If you have any questions or comments class about this content, please feel free to post it in the class discussion board or shoot me an email. And as always, happy studies.